film this intro bit because I have a lady coming to get this right now and I realized that I didn't say anything about it beforehand. So this is a dresser um, and it's been in my husband's family for a millennia and uh, we are ready to get rid of it because we just did the kids' desk. So this was a solid plane with layers and layers of paint on it dresser that I redid in a crazy fashion. So if you'd like to see how we did this with all these added details here and here, along the sides, along the top. Oh, I was gonna tilt it towards you, but all the words will come out. Um, yeah, just keep watching and uh, hope you enjoy. Oh, like, subscribe, all that jazz. See you guys next time. Here's the before shot. As you can see, it is a shiny latex paint. We gave it a quick scuff sand just so that the chalk paint would stick to it. And I kind of got all the family in on the action because it's just fun to be outside together. So I have Gracie making molds for me and the boys are both sanding the piece, nothing too crazy. And then I'm just gluing on all the molds where I want everything. So I updated all of the knobs and then also put this frame around the very top drawer to kind of give me just a little more excitement to the, cause it was such a basic dresser. I wanted to give it, you know, something exciting. And then I did a custom blend on this entire dresser. So this paint will never be recreated exactly the same because I don't measure anything. I just made sure I had three colors to work with, um, a dark, medium, and light, obviously for blending and that's kind of where I started with everything and I just mix them up until I kind of like everything and then I just slap it on I use my middle color so I blend up most of the middle color there I have the most of that color because I do the entire dresser in that and then I'll do a lesser amount of the dark and the light because they'll go on in the second coat along with more of the mid-tone color and as you can see, we already have the molds on the knobs. Um, I just paint right over there and I kind of make sure the paint's a little thick just to make it look like it's lived on the dresser, you know, its whole life. Because they're fresh and new and the entire dresser has had so many paint jobs, I needed to make the molds on there look like they've lived on the dresser as long as, you know, all the other layers of paint have. It's a bit tedious. I just want to make sure I get all the crevices filled with paint. And it makes it a little easier to get this paint on. It was a bit of a warm day. So if you keep your piece damp with the Mr. Bottle, it makes the paint go on much easier and you'll get a smoother finish at the end. This was a very smooth piece by the time I was done with it. So I wouldn't quite call this a sand, but more like just a quick brush off with some fine grit sandpaper. I use my sanding block. It's a 220, but it's been used a lot. So it's probably even higher than that. It's just, it's very fine and I'm not really sanding it. Like I said, I'm just kind of brushing off any high points, anything that's gotten into the paint. And then for a little jazz up, I added these stencils and I'm doing them raised. I did a whole video on these in particular that you can watch um, to learn how to do raised stenciling if you'd like. This is my favorite part is taking off the stencil. It's so satisfying, assuming that I haven't ruined it. Yeah, it's just good. And then so I wait till those dry and then go over those with the same color paint. I was debating on keeping them that lighter color because I did uh, color my putty and everything, but I decided that 
I wanted to blend them into the dresser and then pop them with gilding wax. So that's what I did. And then here you can see I'm just doing my shading in layers. So I've got the mid-tone down, the dark color, and then I just blend all three colors together until I like the way that it looks. Just continuously adding more colors, adding more water until the blend is what I deem, you know, good enough. And I'm still not the best at it, but I was pretty happy with this piece. And here I'm sealing with a satin poly. This was kind of an interesting piece for me because I sealed the entire thing in the satin poly, which is one of my most favorite uh, sealers because it's not really glossy, but it's also not full on matte. It's just like the perfect in between for me to where I feel like I can, you know, have a wipeable surface to be able to clean things off, but you know, not that super reflective shine. Um, but then I also added wax to the top because I liked the way that it was working with the stuff at the end. We'll get to that. So I added gilding wax to all of these pieces. Um, as you can see, it just makes the biggest difference in making those things really stand out. The details just come alive as soon as you put the gilding wax on there. Um, I believe, oh, this one is in rose gold. It is a rose gold gilding wax. Um, and here's a fun thing. So I, you can see kind of a strip along the top of the dresser that I couldn't fill in with wood putty and I couldn't get it sanded down right. So I decided to add race stenciling along the top to give it some added detail and also cover up that imperfection in the paint, which I didn't like. So I mixed up some more colored uh, putty for this and it was obviously too runny and I tried it anyways which wasn't the best decision, but hey, that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, but the plus side is you get it on, realize you mess it up, and then, you know, wipe it off because it's that wet. And I've already sealed it with poly, so it's not like I'm ruining anything and I have to start over. It's just this one spot, I can fix it, which I do. <laughs> yeah, no, take your time. Take your time. It's going to look great. Yeah, just a blob. And I knew that was going to happen, and yet I did it anyways. So yeah, wipe it off. Like I said, I have poly down, so it's just not a big deal. I can get it all cleaned up. And what I do is just leave the lid off the container and stir it for the next couple of days. And eventually it thickens up and I can use it again properly. So I'm hitting all the other details with the gilding wax. I'm going to go through and do all of the stencils. This was a big gilding wax piece and people apparently love that because I posted this piece and within minutes I had several people wanting to buy it. So it sold within an hour of posting which was kind of awesome. And obviously we did a con contactless <laughs> exchange. For those of you that are worried. Now we can go back to the good stencil. And you can see it's much thicker. It's not just pouring off the spatula. Um, and I've already done a row of them, as you can see, and then we're going to make them pop again with some more gilding wax because apparently that is the theme of this video, gilding wax. Also note the elixir of life on top of the dresser there. Delightful. I always work with coffee. Um, you can also see some lettering on the front midsection. It was my first time trying this. I'll maybe do a video on it later when I feel like I'm good enough at it. I didn't want to include that here because it was a process and I just, I don't feel like I'm good enough at it yet to be sharing it with people. <laughs> um, so this, I chose to do the gilding wax on here. 
the stencil on this was kind of a, it was too thick of a stencil. So it didn't have the best detailing like the ones on the front and the sides had. So I used the same stencil and then went over it with gilding wax and a brush to make sure that I was getting as much detail as possible. So I could have done that with the other stencils too, but they were raised up enough and had enough detail in them that I could just do it with my finger and catch all the detail that I wanted. But these ones were a little more difficult, so. And then here I decided to paint all of the drawer sides because I just, I like to have extra fans on everything. This dresser was so extra. I, I mean, it was very fun to do. So I used my lightest color of the dresser to complement so when you pulled out the drawers that matched, but not really, it was in the same color family because it was the same highlight I used over everything. And then I just used white to stencil in the sides of the drawers. I also like to use wax on the sides of the drawers because wax makes everything slide smoother anyways. And it, I just feel like it's a good, a good thing to use. And then of course the drawers all got liner. This dresser was really old. So you could see like paint drips and all kinds of things like that inside the dresser that I just don't like having in there if I'm selling a piece. So I got this really pretty drawer liner off of Amazon and that's what went in there. Okay, so since this piece is cut perfectly, I'm going to take the same piece, fit it in all of the other drawers to make sure it fits those all perfectly because this is an older dresser. The dimensions could be a little different on each, but if it does fit every single one of them, I'm just going to use this as the template for all of them instead of trying to fit it in each drawer. I'm going to fit the paper to this paper and make all my cuts that way. And then I'll have perfect copies of everything.